name is Paul Wheaton. I uh, wrote a, well, I, I created a program and made it free, 100% free. And then a bunch of people said, you should make it into a book. And it's like, why would anybody buy a book if it's all already free? And they said, trust us. So we are like, oh, okay. So we did a Kickstarter and we got $150,000. So it turns out they were right. Uh, enough people did want it as a book. So uh, we made lots of books, um, but it's also free. So you can just go and look at it anytime. And that's, and that's what the presentation today is about. And then I'm going to try and see if, oh, I have a Kickstarter right now. The Low Tech Laboratory is going on. Look, my, my assistant, see, they, they make, they change every presentation every time to be timely. And so um, uh, I, didn't, I don't look at these slides at a time. But yeah, there is. There's a Kickstarter going on right now. Uh, and we're going to do the Permaculture Technology Jamboree, which is basically you know, um, all these kinds of projects that end up going into the Low Tech Laboratory movie. OK. A framework to connect industrious people with elderly landowners. Um, now available as a physical book or ebook. And oh, actually, this little two minute video really does a good job. I'm, I'm not sure if the sound is on. We didn't test it. Oh, it is? Okay, good, good. I'm going to go ahead and, and hit the play button. A few years ago, the natural building genius, Mike Ayler, asked me to find someone worthy to inherit his land. He needed to know his projects would continue to move forward and not be bulldozed for a strip mall. When he died, Mike's estate included several homes, vehicles, cash, and a strong income stream from his books. Over the years, Mike had more than 100 interns, but none of them made the cut. Mike needed more than what any of them brought to the table. And Mike is just one example. I've had this exact same conversation with dozens of other landowners looking for somebody worthy. Each year in the US, millions of acres of farmland are abandoned. How can we connect those acres with people that want to build a better world? I made a list of things people could accomplish and document. Things that would impress people like Mike. Kind of like a college degree in homesteading, but with purely physical accomplishments, like growing a garden, building a shed, building a small pond, or felling a tree. And smaller but still important accomplishments, like preserving fruit, mending a tool, foraging for mushrooms, or fixing a leaky faucet. Thanks to the community at permies.com, that list has now grown into something substantial. We call it SKIP skills to inherit property, a chance to skip the rat race. If you complete skip, there are hundreds of thousands of people, like Mike, prepared to leave their land to you. The first level is about 80 tasks that can be done in two or three weeks. The next levels get more impressive and take more time. Then we made another program that can be done by people living in apartments anywhere in the world. We designed Skip to be free for everybody. Your accomplishments are verified by the Skip community, and later you will verify the accomplishments of others. See, it's pretty, I, I think it's, it's pretty good. There it goes. Oh, about 12 hours of stuff matching the 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so, all right, the, the key is, who's, who's familiar with Mike Ayler? Anybody heard of him? Well, yeah, Stephen, okay, yeah. Any, anybody? Nobody else. Okay, so Mike Ayler lived up in Bonners Ferry. He wrote the $50 and up underground house book. And um, for the, probably the last two, two and a half years of his life, he would call me about once a month and ask me for somebody worthy to will his land to. And the funny thing is, is I've talked to dozens of landowners like that that are like asking me basically the same question. But Mike was just a little bit more persistent than the rest. So I kind of centered the story around him. And it's kind of fascinating because... Not only does he just have a lot that he was trying to will to somebody, it's like he had over 100 interns over the years, and, and none of them met his criteria. And, um, and it's kind of like, well, what would it take for somebody to meet your criteria? 
Well, you know, somebody who's built some things, who's accomplished something, who's done something, something of any kind of substance. I mean, I'm not even setting the bar very high. And then the next month, and he'd call, he'd say the whole thing again, but louder, hoping that that would help, you know, make this work. And, and then actually, I did send a, uh, somebody over from my place uh, up to his place, and they were there for two months by the time that Mike died, uh, which wasn't enough. Mike, Mike had not yet seen enough from that person to feel convinced to will his land and all of his stuff to that person. So it's kind of like um, uh, these, these people um, uh, are, so many of them are looking for somebody and, and about half of the time a homestead, about half of all homesteads end up going to the county when they die. So nobody. I mean, every time I give this presentation, it's like, well, what if they got kids? And it's like, yeah, I hear that story too. Like they hate their kids. Or it's like my kids will just liquidate it. They've, they've got all of their lives put into loving this property. And they want somebody to love it even more than they did. And it's like they don't want somebody to just sell it or somebody to just bulldoze it or something like that. They want... Now, that's how it all started. That's how this whole program started, is with the idea that somebody, these, these people needed to find somebody worthy. And um, uh, how do we go about that? And so basically, Skip is a list of over a thousand projects that you can verify that you did. So. Uh, uh, there's other projects that we could have added to the list, but we couldn't come up with a good way to verify that the individual did them. So uh, there's more and more and more and more, but the key is is that we've found that now that we're hip deep in this program, that a lot of the people are doing it for a variety of different reasons. Just like when people attend the university, not all of them are looking for a worky job, you know? Different people have different reasons why they go to the university. Most of them, of course, are looking for that job. Now, we do explain in, in the online and in the book about how uh, comparing it to the choice of going to college. And it's kind of like you go to college, and maybe I, talk, maybe I have a slide about it, but you go to college, and then um, it's to get a job. And then you get the job. And then you got to pay back all your debts, typically, Usually it's $100,000 worth of debt. You gotta pay all that back, and then you gotta start saving up, and then once you get enough money, then you can go and buy your homestead dream home, and then start buying all the tools and materials and build it all up and do all that kind of stuff. As opposed to the skip program, where if you spend your time going down the skip road, then you kind of end up at the destination much, much earlier. But um, uh, a fair question that everybody's going to probably want to ask is how many people have done this so far? And I'm going to say zero. We just started doing it. We've got, I think, like 500 people that are working on it. And I bet, and I know that we have heard from about, I want to say about 40 Otis's, 40, 40 people with land. We call them Otis. We, in the book, we say that Otis is going to be an amalgamation. This fictitious person is an amalgamation of all of these different people we've heard from. In fact, there is somebody north of here, about 45 minutes to the north, that uh, has contacted me four times saying, you know, at what point are they ready? <laughs> and I'm saying, like, well, we designed the program to get all the way to PEP 4, and that's when you would pick them. But I think that if somebody got to PEP 2, you might say, good enough, get over here. <laughs> yes? Do you retroactively put in that you've done a project, or is this, you have to start from scratch? Like if two years ago you built like a, a new gutter system or something that is like more efficient? Okay. So that's even an option. So like two years ago you built a thing, yeah. and it was amazing, and you didn't take any pictures of it. You're the only one that knows that you did it. Um, and so the thing is, is that, uh, like, and then it's, there's a possibility that we don't even have that as one of the BBs, whatever it was that you did, whatever it was that you made. But it would mean that whatever you do that's similar to that, that where we do have a BB, that it would probably take you a third of the time because now you're a ringer, <laughs> you're a pro, you can whip right through it. So we do get asked that a lot. 
And the answer is always no. You know, it's like uh, we don't have any way of proving it. And that's kind of the, for these Otis's, and, and including Mike, it's like he's sick to death of, of talking to people who are like, I'm worthy. I'm awesome. I'm amazing. And then he kind of like, well, you know, let's see you build a little something. And it turns out it was all fiction. And it's like, there's because I think most of our industrious people have been told you go to college, you then get a worky job, you earn your money, you make a grub steak, then you buy the land and you go from there. That's so then most of our industrious people are traveling that road. And it's kind of like as opposed to the people that Mike was getting, which were people that were not traveling that road. And so um, and and it's well, anyway, those stories go on and on and on. They're, and there are some stories. Ooh. Mike has shared some of those stories with me, and they are hilarious. So um, all right, what do we get else? Uh, Mike's a famous author, um, 52 acres, all the things. Otis, <clears throat> and this, so here's a mishmash of several dozen people. So when we're writing the book, it's like all these different people that I've heard from that have land and are looking for somebody to will it to. Um, and uh, two houses, 200 acres, um, and it says two houses again. <laughs> There's just two. <laughs> I don't know why it says it twice. Uh, a good barn, a good tractor, a good truck, and about 80 grand in the bank. Um, and uh, he has three kids, but he's not interested. They're not interested, and he's not interested in them just getting it and selling it. And so um, he wants his land to go to somebody industrious. And he doesn't trust college kids, and the high school kids love their phones too much. And so I think one of the most common metrics that I hear from the Otis is, is like, um, have they ever put up a cord of wood? You know, I, and that's, you know, that's a fair metric. You know, it's like, have they ever, just, just even one cord? And then, of course, then, of course, if you say yes, then, then they want to know, like, okay, you put up, like, you know, six cord a year kind of a thing. Like, how industrious are you? And how long does it take you to do it? These are, these are metrics. I mean, you know, uh, how, how industrious are you? And this is, this is probably the primary metric for most Otis's to try to determine whether or not somebody is worthy. Um, and, uh, and if you can't find somebody industrious, he's just going to let it go to his kids. And that's basically what happened to Mike. It went to his niece. His niece sold it um, and to somebody just to get the money. And then so now all of his natural building stuff is, is gone. Well, not gone. It's still there. It's just owned by somebody else. So um, like I said, uh, uh, Mike had over 100 interns. Um, uh, sometimes he'd have two or three interns, and sometimes he'd have just one. And every year was a different story, but they'd come and go. And um, a lot of times, the intern showing up is like, I'm not going to drive across the country to get to your house unless you send me over the signed paperwork showing that you've already willed your land to me. And then uh, Mike's position is, is I'm not going to sign anything until I know you're worthy. And I'm not going to know you're worthy until you get your ass over here and start working. So start with two or three weeks of bickering back and forth about that. And it's like, and, and I think most interns, it's like that conversation never comes up. They just come out in order to learn from the master, Mike Ayler. And, and so, but even still, it's like, you know, soon they're going down the road again. And um, for one reason or another. But um, the thing is, is that Mike is like looking for somebody who's going to jump in and start getting work done. And um, the, the, in this case, Ferd. Ferd is, is looking for Mike to teach him in the way he wants to be taught. There is there's an enormous gap between these two people. And, um, and they're just not working it out. They're not coming together. They're not going to reach an agreement. And so, um, uh, it, and, then it, and then it fails. So this system, Skip, is an attempt to make it so that people will, and, there, and we're getting a lot of people who just want to pick up some homesteading skills. We're, I think uh, 
I would imagine about a third of the people that are in Skip right now inherited land and they have no idea what to do. And so they're doing some of the projects and then submitting all the pictures and saying, huh, what do you think? Is that all right? And, and so they're trying to get feedback that they're building their skills. Because it's kind of set up that way to, to, to build your overall skills. Um, so you start with the easier stuff. The, the BBs are, are small. They're, uh, they're fairly quick, usually like a half a day each or so on average. Some are like, an, some, some are like five minutes and some are like, some, are, some of them people take like uh, three or four hours, but some people will take those three or four hour ones and it's a full day thing. And so I think uh, a good example is uh, making a club style mallet. Um, uh, somebody who uh, works in the woods a lot can make a club style mallet in about seven minutes. Um, I'd say most people can make a club style mallet in about an hour and a half. Is that, yeah, Steven's, Steven's nodding. And then, yeah, about an hour and a half on average. And I, I have to say on average because there are some people where it's like about six hours out, they are still struggling with that. <laughs> and it's like, that's fair, man. All you got to do is get to the finish line. There's no thing that says, how long did it take you to do it? And so, um, but it, you know, so, so some of the BBs are, but at the, at the beginning level for PEP1, most of them are, I don't know, hour, two hours, three hours, something like that. And, um, and some people take longer than others. Uh, uh, skip, PEX, and PEP. So PEX, the idea is, is that we designed it so that there can be hundreds or thousands of different programs. And PEP is just the first one. And um, because when I was developing it, I kept getting a lot of people that are like, okay, what do you, but, but how do you do that in a desert? And it's like, uh, uh, how do you do that if you're in a tropical area? What if I don't have trees? And, and they're kind of listing off all these. And so finally it's like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make something that's according to my values and it's going to be something that is going to um, uh, work here in Montana at my place. And, and then later will come these other similar programs that'll be set up for deserts or for somebody else's value set or whatever. And we are getting some of those. So right now there are two that are all done, PEP and PEA. Uh, PEA is for anywhere, so permaculture experience anywhere. And then um, uh, now there's PEM and that's about to come online and that's Mike, my co-author, I was doing that one. And he's got a different value set. But, um, so the idea is, is that it's going to be limited to just one value set until later on there's more programs. It's for learning, but not for learning. We have a framework, but we don't talk about how to do it. You, you have to teach yourself, however you're going to do it. And there are people who will also teach these things. There are different um, skip days at different places. We've got two up at my place. We've got one that's free and one that's more of a guided, instructed thing. Um, so it's, it's, it's for documenting, but it's not about testing whether or not you, you've observed all the safety procedures or anything like that. Skip versus college. Um, uh, I, I think that the big thing is, is that for a, a lot of people, um, I, I've heard college has become less while costing more. Is that, can people, I don't know how to hold a metric up to that, but I feel like when I hear about it, it does seem like the programs are not as valuable as they used to be. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing this. My main issue with college as I've been going through it is that they're less focused on practical application, just like research this and then like Okay. I'd, I'd have to say that most Otis's don't have much value for people who've attended college. And, um, and it's like they, they get people from colleges coming around saying, you ought to do this. And it's like, well, have you done it? And it's like, no, I read about it. And, and it's kind of like, so Otis doesn't, Otis wants to see that people have done things. And it's true, academia is mostly on paper. Um, I'm trying to think of like, what are, 
what are physical things that you create? I mean, in a, if you're taking an art program, I suppose you're going to create physical things. And it's like, okay, now, now here's an artifact. Um, I suppose in software engineering, you could create software that you could then do things with. It's not exactly physical, but it's kind of physical. But if, if it's a business degree, do you set up a business and run it? But if it's an ag degree, it's not like they're going to say, okay, here's your acre and uh, go. <laughs> we want a million calories by fall. You know, they don't, they don't do that. All right. Um, uh, for your college degree, it costs $142,000 on average. Um, you get academic knowledge on the subject of choice, 40 hours a week. And so here I'm doing the, the crime of every presenter, just reading the damn slide. Um, <clears throat> There are some things that are very similar to, uh, between the two, but um, the, I think that the key is, is that when you get down to the bottom, there's the concept of going to the workplace. You spend four years in college, and then you go to your worky job. Sometimes you have a dream job. Has anybody here ever had a job where it was difficult, and it was um, unkind, it was um, icky? Is any, anybody, nobody, nobody's holding their hand up? Oh, see, I was thinking everybody has been there at least once in their life where it's like, I'm out of here, man. This is, this is awful. <laughs> so you go to college, get your 40 degree, and then like, ah, the workplace can be rough and unkind. Um, whereas in Skip, the idea is to dodge the concept of employment entirely. All right. So um, PEP is broken down into 22 aspects. And so in order to get PEP 1 certification, you need to complete the sand badge for 16 of the 22 aspects. And so um, <clears throat> it, originally the idea was is that we selected tasks that would be about five hours total. But we're hearing back from a lot of people that when you do it by yourself, they're going to 10 or 12 hours for each um, uh, badge. What do you think, Stephen? About 10 or 12 hours for each badge on average, maybe? To pick up PEP 1, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, OK. So originally, we thought it would be about 40 hours worth of work. But now we're hearing it's going to be closer to about two weeks. Um, Wait, no, 80 hours of work. We thought it would be 80 hours, so two weeks solid, but we're hearing more like a month. If you really focus on it for a month, that'll get you to PEP 1. So all of these different things, you can you know, feel free to read. Um, <clears throat> we've had several people, uh, uh, I think three people get PEP 1 so far. And um, Opalin is very close to getting PEP 2. So. Um, but I think we've got several hundred people that are currently actively trying to work on BBs right now. Um, and Stephen is in charge of our boot camp at Wheaton Labs. And um, uh, people are, when people say, I want to get a BB for this thing that we're, is similar to what we're working on today, then we um, allow it. We give them some room. And then, of course, they need to take the appropriate pictures and whatnot in order to prove that they did it. So um, I don't know, about a third of the time, half the time, uh, a person could be um, working on getting their BBs. All right. That was it. Wow, that, we got through that so fast. What was that, like half an hour? I think it was a half an hour presentation. Questions about Skip and Pep? I have a question. Yes. Our family of four is the program designed so one person does this, or can all of us incorporate our skills and work through them? Okay, so the question is, is that if you're a family of four, which you don't look like four from here, maybe. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. Um, I would have to say that um, it's based on the individual. So all four individuals can do it, but you can't like pool your BBs. Yeah, and so. Um, uh, yeah, each, each, each of the four can do it, or just one can do it. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what your goals are, but um, yeah, it's, the system is designed per individual. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Next question. Yes. You keep saying BBs, and I 
I see what this, what that means, or how you spell it, or what that's about. Very good point. Badge bits. Yeah, and so each BB, each BB is like a project, carving a wooden spoon, making a wooden mallet. Um, there's uh, cooking and, and certain things, doing food uh, preservation. Sweeping a floor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's some that are really easy. Like I think there's a list somewhere of like what are the 20 easiest BBs to get, and uh, yeah, sweeping a floor is in there. Um, I, one of the bigger BBs for sand badge is to build the kindling cracker. So it's going to require several different kinds of metalworking. And um, so people come out to my place and they work on these. Now we have lots of kindling crackers. <laughs> Some are more handsome than others. <laughs> oh, and I think, I think an important thing, when you carve that wooden spoon, wear some heavy gloves. And we see lots of pictures of people's wooden spoon project and it's like there's blood all over the spoon. So it's like wear some heavy gloves. And be prepared. Um, a lot of times the, um, uh, the first spoon looks more like a stick with a thick end and, and people are gonna say, no, do it over. And um, you're, gonna not, you're not gonna get that BB. So about half the time I think that's one that people fail. And, uh, and they have to do it over again. And so, uh, but I think a lot of them are pretty, like, like club style mallet goes pretty fast. I think that the compound mallet takes a little bit longer, it takes a little bit more thought. Um, but out of the 22 aspects, I keep thinking of the woodworking ones because I kind of think those are a really good example. Um, but there's, there's 20, you know, I'm trying to think like, what are, what are the, uh, um, uh, uh, natural care, natural, um, natural medicine. Natural medicine is one. Um, and so, you know, you're going to go out and, and harvest. Oh, and foraging is another one. To, and here in Montana, there's a lot of amazing foraging opportunities. So um, uh, gardening, of course, is one. And, um, oh, look at that. Yay. So um, anyway, BB. It's, it's like the smallest little component it's one project. Some BBs, when you start getting up into the, the, the iron badges and things like that, they're really big. They're going to take like a year to do. They're big projects. But when you're doing the sand badges, they're all really tiny projects. They're all really small. Can you work on multiple at a time? I don't care. Yeah. As long as you meet the requirements. Here and then you can do a couple others on the side. That's pretty much what everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, some people have a really bad habit of not posting the pictures and stuff to, to do the last step, to get credit for the BB. They've got the pictures, they took the pictures, and then um, they, did, they just didn't put them up. And it's kind of like, that's an important ingredient. And if you don't do it, you don't get the credit for it. So, um, and they're like, oh, I'll do it later. And that oftentimes isn't a good idea because then they, they forget like the bits or whatever. There was a question over here. Um, so do you have any recommendations of resources in Missoula for people to complete these projects that live in a little studio apartment and don't have the space to do it? The, the PEA stuff is permaculture experience anywhere. And we designed it to be all of the BBs in there are things for if you live in an apartment with no access to a park and you have no balcony and your windows don't open. And your, your landlord is the harshest, meanest landlord in the world. And so you're not allowed to have goldfish. I don't know. It's, we, we made it just really, really strict. And so like, what can you do under those conditions to start racking up BBs and start making some progress? And so I don't know. I think we did a really good job of coming up with excellent projects for that. And I think we did a really excellent job for animal care under animal care for the sand badge and the straw badge, the first two badges, you can get those while being a vegan. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I, feel, I feel really proud of us for having, for having really taken the time, and it did, it took a lot of time to make it so that a vegan could do that. So, um, uh, but we also put a lot of time into the stuff for PEA to make it so that, because like for example, carving, you know, whittling a spoon. You can whittle a spoon inside of an apartment. The only thing is, is that you need to start with a stick. 
and then, but you can, it, it turns out you can buy a stick or a, or a spoon blank um, over the internet. And so we, we consider that as acceptable. And so um, uh, some people are doing that. And, uh, and then you can um, uh, grow a garden indoors. Um, as some industrious people from 10 years ago proved. And wasn't there a store in Missoula that was like, that's all they sold was special grow lights for the people who had those in-home gardens? <laughs> so. Um, and all that stuff would count? It would count towards PEA. Okay. It wouldn't be the same as, as the other program, as PEA. I would say, yeah, of course, it's not exactly the same, but I would say that it still has a lot of weight and value. At the same time, chances are that person inside that very, very strict apartment might be not as strict as we made it out to be. And so then they can knock out some pep stuff, too. And then they might go to a park to get twigs. And they might know somebody with a garden. I mean, Missoula has uh, the, the, the community garden programs. And then they might even know somebody nearby that has some acreage and wants to do some stuff. And they can go over there and fiddly-faddle, maybe even put up a, a half a face cord of firewood. And they'd be like, yeah, I'd love to have somebody come out and do my chores. You know? And so um, then, so we kind of think that PEA is like the gateway drug. and then. You can get started. It does have value. It does have weight. But I think most of the people are probably going to finish. They're going to start with PEA, seeking P1, and they're going to finish with PEP1 and probably never finish P1. But if they want to finish um, P1, um, that's great. It's all set up. It's ready to go. All right. Next question. Let's go over here. Yeah. Okay, I just want to clarify on this like family effort. So, do we have to have two separate gardens? Like, if say that my partner and I are wanting to do a badge, can we go in together on a garden and, and take no. a trip? So we have to have two separate gardens. If you're both going for a badge, you'd have to have two. That's that's the one thing you have to do it by yourself. And we've had a couple of people who stated right in their thing, "This is me and my friend," or "This is, you know, whatever." And I'm doing this collaboratively or whatever, and it's like denied. You didn't do it yourself. You have to, everything, everything has to be something that you did. And the verification somehow, you know, is, is clear that you did it. And so when the Otises come around, they're looking for somebody. But it's like not everybody is, in fact, that's something you put into your, your bio. There's a field for that to say, like, are you looking for an Otis? You know, do you want to eventually match up? Or... You know, are you doing something else? And in, in which case, it's like, I'm not looking for notice. I'm doing this for personal growth, you know, or, or something like that. But if you're looking for notice, notice needs to know what are your values. Now, I know that we've got um, uh, one of the aspects is um, commerce. And I think that's a really important one. Are you able to make money over the... So if you got to Otis's land... Are you just going to liquidate everything and sell it because you suck at this and, and you couldn't cover your own expenses? Or do you have means of making money and you can prove it and you can make money even remotely? So if you move across the country to get this 200 acres, are you going to be able to still have an income? And we put a, we put a lot of emphasis on um, passive income. Who here does not know what that means? Okay, so everybody knows what that is. Excellent. Uh, I get way too many people who get these weird ideas about what that means. And so it's like you've set up a shitty ebook and you put it up and you get $8 a month from it. And it's like, it's not much, but it's something. And then in time, you can build that up and have a bunch of different little things. And then, you know, now you've got $200 a month coming in. And then by the time you get to Otis's place, you might have $700 a month coming in. And it's like, not huge, but it'll cover your cell phone and maybe a couple of other little things. And, and then if you can, you know, do so. Because I, I don't think Otis is looking for people who are going to uh, have a commuter job. Like they're going to, 
live at Otis's place and then drive into town every day to go do a commuter job. They're looking for somebody that's going to be there all day, every day, like Otis was. All right. Is there, do you have to pay to participate in this program? No. Like all the online stuff, there's no like buy-in or anything, you can just... Just start now. Make an account and then, you know, do your first BB, post it up there and then get it verified. And then don't be surprised if your first one, you screwed it up and they're gonna you know, deny you and say you gotta do it over again. So steal yourself, but hey, you go to the university and you suck on your first exam, you know, they're just gonna give you an F or a D or something. And you, you know, if you keep doing that, you get drummed out of school. It's a similar sort of a thing. And then later, you're going to be judging other people's submissions and then part of what's going through your head is like, hey, if I had to do it right, you have to do it right too. <laughs> so we, we've, it does seem like our community in general is very keen on holding the standards high. And so, but, but you can look through and see everybody else's submissions that were approved or denied and why were they denied. So you can kind of get an idea. Did I answer your question? I feel like I'm off babbling. I'm, am I off on a tangent? Did I cover? It's free. Yes. It's totally free. That's what it is. Next question. Yes. So I'm, I'm seeing that in terms of going farmers and ranchers, what they have to be is innovative. They have to look at something and learn it and know about everything. Oh, yes. That is so true. She's saying that, that farmers and ranchers have to be innovative. And I agree. They have to come up with all kinds of wackadoodle things just to get through the day. So, so then, as we're going through these projects, we're not going to be accepted into the situation because we could make a, we could whittle a wooden table set for 18. I mean, what, what you're looking for is the imagination and the ways you learn to do this and put it together, is that right? Okay, so she's, she's saying something about, she thinks that Otis is going to need to see that a person can be creative and innovative because, you know, managing this homestead is going to require that. And I think, I think that the Otises that I have heard from and met are about a hundred times more desperate to find somebody than the person in, that you're thinking of. And it's like, um, they're, I mean, look at Mike. He was calling me every month for, for like two and a half years saying, I need somebody, I need somebody. Otherwise, it's going to go to my niece and she's just going to liquidate it. And so, or I, I could just have it go to the county. I don't want to do that either. And so, um, I guess my question is not that, but it is you developed this with a reason in mind and with the input from the people that need someone to inherit your property. But it's it true. But it isn't the face value of learning how to live in school. I mean, there are some parts of it like chopping wood or all of that or, or you know, earth, all of the things. So there's over a thousand projects. And let's say you've done 300 of them and you prove you did it. You, you prove that you've done th these 300 projects out of a thousand. You've done the 300 smallest and easiest projects for you the, the, or the ones that you found the most enjoyable. And um, I mean, by the time you've completed these 300 projects, you had to figure a bunch of stuff out along the way because, you know, the instruction set was never complete. And so you, you had to make some leaps and then sometimes you stumbled and you had to do it over again. And so I think that there was some of what you're looking for in those 300 projects, plus now that you have this rich diversity of projects, like including textiles, 
Like if you're going to get PEP2 certified, you have to have at least a sand badge and everything, but you have to have a straw badge and a bunch of other stuff. So much you know, more significant, much more substantial. That means you have to have experience with textiles. You've done a fair bit of sewing by the time you've gotten PEP2. You didn't dodge that. So um, as you progress, then you're doing more substantial textiles work and more substantial gardening work and more substantial natural building work. And there's a natural building aspect. And so you've built some stuff that is substantial and you, I think, for each one, you threw a little bit of your own ideas in along the way, and it might meet some of the criteria you're looking for, but I think much like the university, if you're going to go in there to get a degree in biology, they're going to make you take classes in English. And it's like, well, I already know English. That's the only language I know. And yet they're still like, you know, you got to do it. You got you to wax on poetical-like. And you got to write it down, like po poetry. And you got to be able to like say, this book is lame and this book is awesome. Christopher Moore. <laughs> and, and in fact, if you, if you look at his book, Fool, which is about a book about uh, telling the story of King Lear from the perspective of the fool, um, it uses the full beauty of the English language in ways I didn't know you could do. <laughs> so, <clears throat> mm, so delicious. Uh, anyway, the key is, is they're looking for a very rounded out education. We're looking for a homesteader's rounded out education that will impress Otis. And I think that the innovation that you're saying is very important. I think it'll get in there. I can't imagine somebody's going to do all their BBs in such a way that it's like, yeah, they did all the BBs, but they all look so generic. There's like no life in this person. And so I think they're all going to be weird in their own way. I mean, just look at, just look at all those kindling crackers that we have. Man, people have come up with some weird ideas. Most of them really bad ideas. But they did get the BB, and they're technically kindling crackers. And it's like, but, but boy, there is some imagination out there. Have I satisfied your question? Maybe. <laughs> Not quite. Do you want to? Do you want to? You want me to give you a few minutes and see if you can hit, hit me with a new angle? I want to help her up because you know she's she's waving her arm around. She's she's got something. Maybe maybe it has something to do with yours. No. I just wondered if there was like a link we could go to to get this information, like or the forum, like where do you even go to get started in that? Permies.com/skip. That's all the free stuff. Permies.com, P-E-R-M-I-E-S. So permaculture enthusiasts, we go by Permies sometimes. Permies.com slash skip. That's for all the free stuff. And then if you go to Permies.com slash skip dash book, that'll take you to the, the book. You know, it's like, I think it's like 25 bucks and it'll get shipped to you. Um, and the, the e-book is like 10 or something like that. Um, and, and I don't know. I guess people, some people just like a physical book. <laughs> but it's all free. You don't need the book. And you, can, and you can do it all yourself for free. You don't have to go to an event that costs monies. Yes, sir. I'm going to come back to some of the questions a few other people have asked around, um, like four people here, a family, a couple. Okay. I'm really curious about the, your concept of Oh, you got that skip book right there, yeah. Dude. See, it's real. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm really curious as to the reason behind the individuality behind it, as opposed to a collaborative nature. The reason I ask is because I think about my wife and I, and there are things that I enjoy and I'm really good at. Mm -hmm. There are things I hate and I'm not good at. Okay. And she tends to fill in the side that I hate, vice versa. Okay. And so, if this was something that we were going to do as a couple, I guess I'm really, under, I'm having a hard time grasping. You want Otis to love the package deal instead of loving the individual? Well, yeah, because we're both a package deal. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I get it. I get it. So. Um, and then that leads to a further question after okay. you answer. Okay. Okay. I'm curious as to your thought process. It's, it, so, my, so my thought process is, is that if I start taking into account every possible scenario and working that into the program, the program will grow infinitely and I will never finish it. It's, it's in the same boat as like, well, you've designed this to be the Paul Wheaton value set, but what about these people who like to use cardboard and newspaper inside of their horticultural endeavors? You should account for them as well. And what about people who live in deserts? And what about people that live in tropical areas? And, and what if somebody lives at the North Pole? And what if, what if, what if, what if? And it's kind of like, and it, and it was quickly becoming an infinite game and we would never complete the program. So we drew lines and limitations and stuff like that. Now, the next thing is, is that when you go to the university, do they do it by the individual or do they do it by the couple? Like, we hereby give this certificate to this, of, of a degree in engineering to this couple. They got it together. They don't do that, do they? And so, in the words of Joel Salatin, if they can't figure out how to do it, how the hell do you expect me to figure out how to do it? So, um, at this time, it's based on the individual. I think that if you both do it and you show this complementary nature for the two programs, I think that sounds delightful and wonderful. Right, so follow up to that then is the bigger question which I haven't grasped yet is the connection between the Otis and the skipper, as it were, and, and how is that made? And then if it was only me doing it, can the, if, but my, if my wife is going to be, and, and we make that connection, my wife is going to be on the legal documents, what if the Otis says, oh, not happen okay. So the question is, is that we're a package deal, and so how's Otis going to work out that legal stuff? And, and here's my answer. Leave me out of it. I'm glad we had this chat. Basically, um, and the beautiful thing is, is I gave this presentation, and it was short, it was half an hour, and I was told to make it a half an hour presentation, and there would be 15 minutes of Q&A when I first gave the presentation down in Texas about a year ago. And um, the, the great thing, the amazing, is who here knows who Joel Salatin is? He's my bestie. And so uh, I went to this event, and then Joel saw me, and he comes running over, and I know no one will believe it, but that's what happened. He ran over, Paul, 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 I got to tell you about this. And I was like, oh, Joe, I've been trying to reach you and tell you about this skip book. It's based on your book, Fields of Farmers, sort of kind of a little bit, but not really, but some, in which case Joel talks about the problem. He calls them the cantankerous farmers and um, the transient youth and how they want... They, they need to come together, but they're not. And then one of the things he writes about in his book is, don't get involved. Because <laughs> it does. It, the whole thing about wills and how is this going to happen is going to change from person to person and state to state, let alone other countries. And it's like, you get, how much did you give me for that book? Nothing? I gave you that book for free last week, right? So, or last month. Last month I gave you that book for nothing. And so how much, how much uh, uh, legal expertise are you looking for at $500 an hour for free? <laughs> it's like, no, I want 20 hours at $500 an hour, but I want it for free. And, and, then, and then we got thousands of people that want that. And it's like, and I'm not a lawyer. So I've provided a framework to be able to document and measure experiences. And it's like, and I am staying out of whatever happens next, under the advice of Joel Salton. And I think it's very good advice. And, um, and I think everybody should lawyer up and get it sorted out, or not. Because like, man, Mike was getting very, very desperate. And so he just needed to have an inkling that somebody would be worthy. And um, so, so, this, so now we have the framework. And, and I know I talked about this idea with Mike, and he was like, that's exactly what I need. And now I've talked to so many Otis's who have said, 
That is exactly what I need. So, and as far as the final connection goes, then a parade of peppers and skippers are posting all of their stuff, and then it says at the bottom of their thing, like BB60, what is it, does it say BB20 on yours right now? And then um, for the number of BBs that they've got, and then eventually it says PEP1 and PEP2, and then all of the Otis's see that, and then they'll contact that person and say, hey, I got something to offer you. So I believe that when Opalin hits PEP2, I believe she's going to have about 20 offers based on what I've heard so far. And there's all these people waiting for her to touch PEP2. Yes! Uh, hi, I just came in a little late, so I'm kind of catching up with everything, but... Mm, catch up. Yeah, it's been fun. Otis is a very interesting concept, but I was wondering what your thoughts are on like how to allow this program to get people prepared to take on farmland and Otis is a farmer and Otis is a proper business and it's not all about permaculture, it's also about economic viability to the country. And also how do people to afford that lands if they are farming on lands of like, AKA like, let's say someone in Eastern Montana was like, I've got like 3,000 acres. I think the hilarious thing in the question is, so she's saying, you know, what if the Otis is, a, is an actual farmer and not just into blowing rainbows out your ass, permaculture? <laughs> and, well, I, so when I go out and I visit farmers and I try to tell them about permaculture, and it's, and, it, and it's like, okay, here's how you're going to be able to do this with less irrigation and gain more for, fertility over the next three years. And, uh, and you can cut back, you can cut your, your uh, herbicide bill down to about a tenth right out of the gate, and, uh, and they're like, okay, all right, I can see where you're going with this, and I can see how it can work. I like this, do you have a name for it? I say, permaculture, and they say, get the hell off my land, I'm not gonna make any more money blowing rainbows out my ass. And so, I mean, I've heard that, not the, not the, I've heard those exact words only once, which is awesome, <laughs> like what a, <laughs> but the thing is, is that, uh, whereas in Australia, permaculture is a very serious thing, and it's for making money. And clearly, Sepp Holzer's making epic coin. Here in the United States, Mark Shepard's doing an amazing job. Um, so there's, there is money to be had. But if you have an Otis that doesn't like permaculture for whatever reason, I think that Otis needs to make his own program. I made this program. So I, of course, put my stuff into it. And if you want to talk about profit, then you need to convince the library to be able to tolerate me coming here and presenting on how to make the big bucks with permaculture. But I, there are a lot of permaculture people that are adamant that once you sign up for permaculture, you take on a vow of poverty. And, and I, with whatever authority I have as the Duke of Permaculture, uh, say, no. I think I wish that someday all the produce that you buy at Safeway is all permaculture food simply because the farmers make more money. In fact, I also want to say if you take away the Kim Ag subsidy and the organic ag penalty, the consumer will actually pay four times more for Kim Ag food. Is there anybody who doubts my math, even a pinch? Anybody? Anybody want to challenge me on that? Because I've got a whole thread at Permies dedicated to it. It's very easy to Google. You can Google what are the subsidies for corn right now. Just for corn, it's a 75% subsidy right there. Just for corn. And that's, that's just for the actual physical corn. They also get subsidized for all the fuel and fertilizers that they use. But <clears throat> that's getting into a very different topic. I'm, I'm going to say that um, I'm effectively dodging the bullet you've lodged my way. And of course, I'm getting a bit pissy over the subtext of your question. Because I believe firmly that a farmer is going to make far more money with permaculture than they'll ever make doing commodity farming. And I've worked in commodity farming for a very long time. And, um, and it's like, talk to those farmers. And it's like, 
oh yeah, you know, when we get there, we don't even know what the price is until we're delivering it. And it's always less. There's, there's a beautiful movie called Broken Limbs about the apple industry over in Washington State. And it covers this beautifully. It's, and it basically, it's like all these guys uh, are getting their farms repossessed by the bank. And then, um, then about halfway through the movie, it's kind of like, there is just no win. These, all these orchards are doomed. Then it starts to kind of go down this interesting path. And then the last story they tell is a permaculture guy. And he would take a whole bunch of boxes of apples to a local organic grocery and get a bunch of money for them. Because he just had a few trees. And so I want to get to you just a sec. You're, you're next. You're next. And so, um, so he, he, he did the same thing he does everywhere. He boxes up all these apples and he gets down there. And, uh, and they say, oh, man, I wish you'd have called. But we can't pay as much for the apples this year as we paid last year. Will you take this 30% cut? Is that OK? I mean, he came all the way into town and everything. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. I do permaculture. I'll just take the apples back and feed them to my pigs. Not a problem. And they go, wait, 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 wait. We'll pay the full price. We'll pay the full price. So leverage. <laughs> um, beautiful movie. Fantastic movie. And, and then I've got, along the lines of profitability, I've got this, this giant article that I've written. And I've mashed it into a podcast called How Do We Get More Permaculture Apples Into Safeway? And it's really about how do we profit from apples. And then I go way beyond what's covered in that delightful movie. So sorry, you pushed a button. You got, you got to hear things you probably didn't want to hear. And uh, I probably violated the standards a little bit. I, I, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to live this small life. But I'm very large. So <clears throat> all right. Next question. You had a question. That's right. You were holding your hand up for so long. Kind of shifting gears. How did you get your start in permaculture? Slash, did you go to college? Because <sighs> you have a lot of feelings about college. <laughs> well, I loved college. I recommend it to everybody who doesn't have to pay for it. <laughs> um, but I went as an engineer. And um, does anybody, uh, probably, well, pro Stephen's probably the only person who knows what I did as a career before getting bit by the permaculture bug. Does anybody know what I did? So um, I was a software engineer. I am one of the primary uh, designers of the ground systems for the spacecraft that takes the pictures for Google Earth. Um, in 1993, uh, here in Missoula, Montana, I developed some software that um, became number one in the world. It, got, it was uh, used more than all other packages combined. It was called Bananacom. And then, um, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so uh, it was called Bananacom. And uh, uh, eventually, it, uh, it kind of got phased out because somebody came up with this new thing called the internet. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. And so, um, and I made a web browser, but that's another story for another. I used to be a software engineer. And I was kind of famous in that space as well. And uh, I've done some, I had a massive website about software engineering. And then I got bit by the permaculture bug. And then at some point in time, in 2004, I came to the conclusion that it's like, why isn't permaculture a household word? And I tried to convince some of the bigs in permaculture at the time about how they could go about doing this. And they didn't care. They didn't want to do it. So then I felt like I could do it. And I think I've had some success. Uh, I don't think I'm done yet. I still got a long ways to go. But I, I think I am transforming the world. Stephen, you're probably the person most familiar with my work in this room. Am I? Tra Do you believe I'm transforming the world? Way to put me on the spot, man. <laughs> you answered the question without answering the question. And now I'm kind of a little pissed. <laughs> Of course, you know. I don't want to get into my own story, but it took me over 20 years to find my way to finally get to Wheaton Labs. And I'm very glad that I came here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from the East Coast, uh, you know, and like 
what am I, what am I doing wanting to be a farmer? Like, what is this living in a hobbit house? Like, I explain things to my family over in Maryland, and like, and they, they're, they're sort of understanding. <laughs> but I, yeah, every, every time you have some of the, like the summer events that you have, people come from all over the world to be there. Uh, the technology that you share about, whether it's rocket mass heaters or my personal favorite, the willow feeder, <laughs> and, and how you address, like, uh, it's not just an outhouse, it's, it's so much better than that. The, the key is, is that composting toilets are banned in Missoula County, absolutely forbidden, absolutely, and for good reason, for good reason. So we needed a better design, something that would pass muster for people who are very discerning about that kind of thing, and it also needed to be able to scale in an environment made out of human beings, um, whereas a lot of the other systems kind of depend on everybody behaving perfectly. And so, um, so yeah, the willow feeder system. Plus, I think the name fits better because in, in permaculture, there is no waste. Yeah, it tells you what it does. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, uh, yeah, I do believe that you are changing the world. All the innovations that happen at Wheaton Labs are things that are totally right up my alley. And yeah, I wish everybody knew about rocket mass heaters and were able to use them where they live. It's a, it would be a huge change to so many different things. So we're, I think we're making a big difference. And so yeah, how, how did I get into this? And, and honestly, reading the Missoulian 30 years ago, and, and I think when most people would read a newspaper, then they would look at it and see, I hear that sound, and I think it's Stephen. <laughs> and now I know it's not, because you're right there. And, and it's like, oh no, something happened. I better look at that. OK. Um, and I think most people look at it, and, and they come up with ideas of what they should do. Well, they oughta. Why don't they? And I looked at it, and I thought, what can I do? And, um, and I think that's a big difference, because I think most of the people who care about stuff, they're hell-bent on just being angry and talking about what they should do. And I feel like I've got a very strong sense of what can I do, and I feel like Stephen's got that sense. And then for all of the things that I build, so this, this whole book, this whole program was developed by about 15 different people helping me do it. And, and it's like they have this same sense. At any given moment, there's about 100 people helping me to do all of this stuff who kind of have a similar sense, and they want to see it all move forward too. So when you ask me this question, how did I get going on it? And it's like, I made a leap in 2004. I just made a decision. I'm going to try. I'm go I think I can do it. And it'll be hard, and I'm going to try. And so I quit my career went down this path, and <clears throat> I got a fair bit done, and I got a lot of people who are now elbow to elbow with me, and we're all trying together. Does this answer your question? OK, it's good enough anyway. All right, next question. Oh, oh. Is this program like a community where like, if you need to borrow a garden or a space for like a complete these tasks, is it like an open forum where you're like, hey, I'm trying to complete this, would anybody be willing, like, is it, is, are you able to communicate with people, or like, how is it set up? So, our, um, she's asking, is it a community where people can communicate with each other to get, like, like, hey, I, do, I don't, I'm not asking you to do it for me or help me do it, but... If one of but like a gardening project and you need it, like a small thing. Like, I need a stick to whittle into a spoon, do you got a stick in your pocket? Or whatever, you know, do you have a piece of land where I can put, plant some seeds? Do you have, you know, a little of this, a little of that? You know, and it's like, um, first of all, uh, the BB20 event is coming up in April, right? That is a free event that we host at my place um, for everybody who's reached BB20. So they got 20 BBs that they have verified. And once you hit 20 BBs, we tell you, our address and how to get here and come on down and we're going to do this event together and then <clears throat> you use the tools you use my welding equipment and my metal and you're going to make a really ugly kindling cracker or 
put up some firewood or uh, uh, build a hugel culture. I mean, I think everybody wants to do that first. Like, where's the excavator? I want to build a big hugel culture. And it's like, so we do. We, get, we let people have a go at the excavator. If they really suck at it, we say, no, no, you're burning too much diesel. <laughs> you're done. And it's like, uh, but um, I do know that there have been a few in other places besides at my place um, where people have hosted similar like BB20 events. Um, and I like to think that there's going to get to be hundreds in time. But um, it's getting started still. So if you have a need, can you like put it on the form, like, hey, does anybody have something I can borrow? Because people who are just starting won't be at BB20 or whatever to like use those resources. Is this like a community where you can also talk to other people who are going through this journey, even though it's individual? So yes, you can talk to other people who are also going through this journey and get advice and, and get suggestions. And then uh, I, think, I think that's what Permies has been the whole time. And um, I believe we're at about 220,000 threads now of different topics, most of them being about projects and different ways of doing things and stuff like that. I think we have over 200 forums, and um, they're very active. And so uh, you might want to take a look and, and see, but I think there's a lot of, of support. And if you're going to do a BB and you're saying, I'm trying to do a BB, I'm trying to learn how to do this BB, um, I think you'll get like three times more support for what you're doing. I think, I think the, the, the community at Permies is very excited about the SKIP program. All right, next question. Yes? Uh, you've been saying it a lot. I don't know what it is. Was it <laughs> OK, so you got a block of wood. Right? And we're going to put it here. And now it used to be that you'd take an, an axe and bust it up, and then you'd switch out the axe for a hatchet to bust it up into smaller pieces. And then you get wounds like this, where you, you were like, I should have been paying more attention, right? And it's like, um, so <clears throat> what this is, is it's got kind of a ring on the top and a blade mounted down here. And then you stick the stick on the blade, and then you hit it with a mallet, a nice, dull, not sharp mallet. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the, the ring keeps your hand from coming anywhere near the blade. And so you don't get anything like this. And it's easier. I think it's way easier. It's, I think we can, you can knock up kindling in about half the time um, with that, maybe even faster than that. <laughs> So uh, does that help paint a picture? But uh, there are some that are commercially made. And then, but we found that if we, we came up with a project, and then um, we say, like, uh, first you got to weld this piece together. And then you need to um, stamp your name into it. And so it seems like there's like five different metalworking techniques that go into the kindling cracker. And so it's like you end up. Gaining some, so most of the people that come and do this, they've never welded before. They've never done any metalworking at all before. So that's why they end up looking <laughs> so ugly. And it's like, but really, that's the way that you learn for, for almost all metalworking, but especially welding. You just got to get down there and do it. Who here is welded? OK, right? You, you just got to get in there and do it. Just do some. And it starts off horrible, and it gets better. And it gets better fairly quickly. It doesn't take too long to get fairly decent at it. Does that answer your question? OK. It's just a great example of a project that, of one of the BBs. It's a big, it's probably the biggest BB most people do when they come out. But I would say most people kind of get their kindling cracker done, I'd say, in five hours. It takes the second half of day. Yeah. And some people are kind of like, I want to go work on another hour or two. And some people are like, oh, three hours and I'm done. And it's like, wow, that is the ugliest kindling I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, does it need to be pretty if it works? It does not need to be pretty. At the same time, there's some stuff where it's like, I think the way you did that, it's going to rust really fast. Um, there's some of that. But it's like, oh, well, you know, now we got it. And we'll use it. And then we'll see how fast it rusts out. We'll learn. 
So I don't know, I, I kind of feel like in our whole project is about a lot of innovation. We do a lot of experimenting in the world of homesteading and permaculture. And then, of course, you know, there was some suggestion about farming versus homesteading and permaculture. And I'm going to say that um, when it comes to permaculture, uh, I personally have a view of, I don't like permaculture farms. I think that's an oxymoron. I prefer permaculture gardens. And I, I also am a believer of community. Like you need to build a community to do, to do great permaculture, to do delightful, especially like what we're hearing over here. It's like, I suck at stuff. And yet my wife is awesome at the stuff where I suck. Together, we complement each other. Community, I, I think that's really the way to go. All right, next question. Who's got, anybody else got any more? Are we done? <laughs> There's more, okay. I was wondering, uh, with your Otis program, how many connections have you made on through your forum and your BB? I, I think we've got like a couple of hundred people that have gotten at least one BB. And the Otis is when they contact us, and there's been dozens, uh, and they're like, okay, what do I do? We say, be silent. Because if you stand up and say, I'm looking for a skipper, because I want to inherit my land, then you will get hundreds of people saying, I'm worthy, will it to me? And they haven't, they don't have even one BB. And, and I'm sure, who here has ever been like a landlord and rented out a building? Anybody? Nobody, sort of. And so I don't know how many times I get the story of like, these people are gonna come and do all these permaculture gardens and all these, and then they got here and they never did anything. And um, they just kind of trashed the place. But they had all these promises when they arrived. And, and you'd think, like, well, that was a fluke. And, uh, and it kind of turns out to be more like, no, that's the norm. That's like 98% of the people. So the same thing happened with Mike. You know, all these people, he really, really wanted them to work out, and they didn't. And then um, there's, and I hear all these stories all the time. They keep trying people out and it doesn't work. And so we're trying to come up with a way to get traction in the space and get it to work. Because the, the number of homesteads and farms that are abandoned every year to the death of the owner is phenomenal. I think it's like, uh, is it, is it, it's like five million acres per year just in New York State. And it's, it's, it's stunning. And we've got all these people that are like, I want to do it. I want to get out there and I want to do it. And, and it's kind of like, all right, all you got to do is this, which I think is not much. And then you can have a shortcut. All right, did I answer the question? I feel like I'm babbling again. You have to have a certain amount of BBs in order to be contacted by a notice, by a notice or for an oil skipper to contact a notice. I would say right now, We've told the Otises when they've contacted us to hold off until somebody gets PEP2. And so, and, and the thing I've said over and over again to others, uh, be outside this building, I think once inside this building, is um, I think that we've got, Opalyn is really close to PEP2, and I think that when she hits it, she'll get 20 offers. I think. But, but really, the system is designed for PEP4. And uh, PEP4 should take three or four years to complete. Um, but I think that there's going to be a lot of Otises that aren't going to be that patient. You know? And I know Mike wasn't that patient. He was, he was becoming really upset that he didn't have somebody already. Did that answer your question? OK, good enough. Who else has got a question? Any more? We good? Is that it? Is that the end? I don't see any hands up. We're done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.